okay let's get started good morning uh, good evening everyone uh, depending on your time zone thank you for joining this webinar uh, second in our monthly edge ai webinar series we have uh, more than 100 people that are joining this webinar um, we have uh, two sessions and you know, a one for today um, and then we have one more session early next week um, that will have you know some chinese you know interpretation uh, we are really excited about your attendance as we are now taking just into ai technology that is proven in many different automotive and industrial applications available for broad market applications if you are new to ai hands on you know code development especially embedded ai development you will have all the fundamentals and code examples in the next 45 minutes to do your first hello world program that's definitely guaranteed you will also get to know different software frameworks and uh, tools a lot of you know, developers use and how ti is making it easy to use any of your popular or your favorite machine learning frameworks and get your embedded ai development uh, started my name is uh, Shri Gurapu. I am in uh, the processor software applications team, and we have uh, three panelists, you know, along with me: uh, Manisha Agarwal, Katrina Twazan from our uh, Jacinto marketing team, and also Mukul Bhatnagar from our Jacinto applications team. They will be checking for any questions that you may have uh, throughout the presentation. So please don't be shy in asking anything, you know, during the presentation they'll be able to you know, answer right away or take actions to follow up. Okay, let's uh, get started. So if you think about you know, Hello World or you know, um, in a program, right? The tradition started back in 1978, right? So the image that you see on the left side is from uh, Wikipedia. Um, this is a, a simple you know, C Hello World program that you know, Brian Kernigan you know, kind of you know, wrote it um, to get people started with, you know, any programming language. So that kind of the, became the tradition. If we apply the same thing in the AI world, what we can do is we can really do some fancy things. You can take an image, for example, as you see over here, and we can be, we can read and pre-process the image. We can automatically determine what objects are in that image and we can output the results in a way that is very easy to understand. So the bar is much higher for the Hello World program in the AI world because we are really doing some smart stuff. That's a lot of you know, complexity. But at TI, what we are trying to do is make these complex things much simpler. And that's what this webinar is all about. So you will see all the steps that you know you need to take you know to do all these you know, functions and also be able to embed that into an edge device because at the end of the day all the you know if you see ai you know every you know all the embedded electronic devices you will always see ai inside how do you get ai inside right that's really the essence of um, this webinar so this is the agenda that we are going to be following. So we'll do a, re a quick uh, recap you know, from the previous webinar where Manisha introduced just into AI technology for embedded edge AI applications. Then we'll spend some time briefly talking about um, what is the application development process? You know, what are these models? How do you go about selecting it? How do you go about optimizing it? Um, and then we'll apply this principle to our hello world example, the same dog cat example that you know, we have seen you know, before, uh, but how do you go about doing it? And we're going to approach this problem in three steps. Number one, run the code on the PC, right? Using the software um, tools that are available um, in the market, right? You know, how do you first you know, get up to speed on the PC? And then the step two is now get the same code as is and run it on the ARM processor inside the Jacinto SLC. And the third step is now, how do you um, enable the accelerations to do this much faster? And we'll also spend in a few minutes on uh, the demo. And after we finish that basic hello world, of course, that's when your real journey begins. 
right? And how do you, what path you, know, you can take, you know, in that real application development journey, we'll spend a few minutes and then wrap it up with a call to action. Okay, so just looking at, you know, we talked about a lot of, you know, different uh, electronic end equipment saying, you know, AI inside, right? So uh, we see AI all around us. It's influencing broad applications across many different markets. And one thing that you see here is um, all these applications don't need to be new. Even existing applications, like whether it's a factory automation robot, now we are finding new use cases enabled by AI enabled by the smartness that AI technology offers. Could be in you know, a last mile robots, right? There are many different you know, applications that this would be you know, relevant. Typical architecture of enabling this intelligence, right? Is uh, you know, use uh, general purpose compute or you know, use you know, GPU accelerators you know, to be able to do it. These were designed for different applications, but that's one way to get the job done. And in TI, what we are doing is very straightforward. We want to enable AI in lower power and with lower complexity. And we want to enable this with simple Linux-based programming using popular software frameworks. So you don't have to do a lot of you know, groundwork on driver development or Linux development. You can really stick to very high level and use popular machine learning uh, frameworks and the software tools that are already available. So that's what the Jacinto architecture that you see on the right hand side. Uh, we have uh, a deep learning accelerator. This is completely purpose built for AI applications. And you will see some of the performance improvement when you start leveraging uh, the use of this deep learning accelerator. And then we have multiple you know, imaging and vision accelerators and ARM A72 core, this is a multi-core, and that's what running on Linux and really enabling the software frameworks and uh, ease of use. And what is this purpose-built accelerator? And this is a quick refresh. This is, uh, uh, we have uh, TI's you know, special accelerator. It's uh, um, including both, you know, say C7X DSP and also a module called MMA, you know, matrix multiply accelerator. With the combination of you know, these two, architected primarily for AI, we are really achieving industry's best in class, high frames per second for tops. Frames per second is how often this you can run this you know, image processing and detect you know, what's in the image. Um, you, know, or you can achieve that you know, very efficiently uh, with uh, this particular you know, architecture. And even on the performance side, you know, we offer up to you know eight tops at uh, industry's best in class, you know, power envelope. So that's the core of this, you know, just into uh, architecture. So that's just a recap of uh, what just into AI technology is about. Now let's get into how do we go about developing your first, um, you know, um, software um, and also your application development. So for this. We provide comprehensive software, you know, from uh, on our uh, platforms. Um, it comes with both uh, the foundational components that you see at the bottom, right? So all the drivers that I talked about, all the board support packages, and all that stuff, and then the development environment to keep it keep the development as easy as possible. So we have, you know, for video in, video out, we have a GStreamer framework, we have a OpenCV, you know, for computer vision. And for the deep learning, we provide, we offer support for all the popular runtime frameworks. So focus for today's webinar is going to be in the middle, right? Really using, um, you know, deep learning, you know, frameworks that are available and how do you, you know, tweak it to our uh, hardware, but we'll have, you know, subsequent webinars covering different aspects of it, uh, digging, you know, uh, deeper into each one of this. So just a quick uh, recap of what this deep learning is all about, right? We looked at the dog and the cat picture, right? And how do you automatically determine that there is a dog? How do you automatically determine that there is a cat? And extend that to, you know, any different image, you extend that to, you know, different, you know, video clips, right? So fundamentally, deep learning is all about, you know, creating a model 
that is trained on a known data set. And there are a lot of you know, popular uh, data sets that you, know, you can see over here, Microsoft Coco, ImageNet, and many others. Um, essentially, these are you know, millions of you know, data examples. And, and then the, mid, uh, the middle box in the red here is, is really creating that model, training the model to be able to recognize this object. And once you create that model, then you can take that and then use it in a, with your own input, right? And that you know, future inference is happening in one pass. So the left-hand side is uh, model development, and then the right-hand side is using that model to be able to apply on your real-time use cases. And typically, when you want to do that inference on an electronic you know, end device, um, that's going to be an embedded edge device. And that's where our Jacinto TDA platform is going to be you know, very applicable. So that is the basic essence of you know, AI, you know, gen creating the models and using the model. Now, how do you add AI into your system? It's as simple as uh, three steps with the uh, TI's comprehensive software offering. So. The first step is, um, you know, there are a lot of you know, models out there already, you know, using different you know, frameworks. Um, you can do all the development on your PC, right? And you can train anywhere, develop anywhere, bring that model to the embedded platform. And we also offer, um, you know, a proactive, you know, um, service you know, where we verify popular models uh, and make sure they're running on our hardware. And we provide a tool you know, for you to choose um, you know, out of you know, 60 models that we have already verified, pick anything that, that, you know, is based, that meets your accuracy or the speed requirements. And we have all these you know, models on the GitHub, you, know, you can see the link over there. So you can do the first one um, model is, uh, is on the PC, you, know, you could do anywhere. And the second step is now you get that model compile and optimize for our SOC. And the C7X DSP and the MMA accelerator, accelerator that I showed in the couple of you know, slides ago, um, you know, how do you get this neural network model run on this uh, TI SOC? That's uh, step number two. And even here, we provide support for industry standard uh, frameworks. So you would use the same language that you use uh, for developing the model. The same TensorFlow Lite libraries you know, can be used. The same Python program you know, could be used to be able to compile and optimize uh, into the SOC. And then the number three is deploy that uh, model that is optimized onto the processor. You, know, you will be able to run it directly on top of the Linux and, um, um, and you know, get to your product development in a much faster. So those are the three steps of adding AI into your uh, system. I talked about model selection, the first step, right? So there are, if you look at the industry, there is a good um, reference over here. Um, there is a lot of you know, models that are developed. They're free to use you know, for production into your product. Um, and these are all open source models. And um, there is a basically trade-off, just like anything in life, Right, there is a trade-off that's going to be accuracy versus operations, and it's just amazing, you know, how much processing that needs to happen in a model um, to get, you know, decent accuracy. You know, in this x-axis that you, know, you see over here, um, just an example, you know, 155 in a million. That's how many operations that needs to happen. Right, so the complexity of the hello world here is uh, quite significant. It's not just writing a printf statement, right, but there is a lot of you know, research that's already been done. There is a lot of you know, library of these neural network models that are already available you know, for you to use. Now, you may have to do some customization right, you know, for your data set, um, but that's going to be incremental approach rather than you know, doing something you know, from ground up. And as I mentioned, you know, we have all those you know, models in the previous slide and we uh, do a lot of you know, work you know, for you already. Um, as I said, you know, we have this model zoo where we have already verified 60 plus models um, that you know, it would work on our platform 
And you can also get this tool you know, from our uh, Edge AI cloud tool that I will be showing uh, later on in the presentation. Um, and you can select these models you know, by the type of you know, function that you are doing, whether it's a classification AI function, uh, detection, or you know, semantic segmentation of the scene. Right? You can choose you know, based on that. You can choose based on the type of you know, runtime that you know, you're using. So multiple ways to get to the model that would work for your application. And these are all available, ready to use. And we are continuously extending this 60. You know, we plan to get to you know, 100 plus models you know, very soon as we get you know, requirements you know, from our broad you know, customer base. And I just talked about runtime, right? So I just did a quick uh, Google Trends uh, search on, there are so many deep learning uh, you know, frameworks and you can see the top five you know, over here. Uh, blue is in a TensorFlow, red is PyTorch, and then Keras and Tiano and uh, MXNet. And the exciting thing is we support all the popular you know, frameworks. In this webinar, in this ex uh, example, Hello World application, we will focus on TensorFlow uh, runtime framework, and we will also use Python because that is very easy to get you get started with the uh, AI development. So now let's get to saying hello world, you know, to the dog and, and to the cat, right? So we're going to approach this problem in three steps. As I said, like this is a very complex stuff, but you know, you can really make it simple if you can do if you can follow these three steps, right? Uh, our, your end goal is to be able to do this uh, detection on the fly in real time on the embedded edge AI device using deep learning acceleration. Right? But let's take you know, three steps. You know, first, let's get the program running on the PC first, and then port the same program onto the J7, you know, Jacinto 7 uh, SOC platform, and then enable the deep learning acceleration. So um, we talked about this you know, already. You know, for this Hello World example, right, you know, we have a decision to make. Right? So we can develop a model you know, in three ways. You can create a custom model from ground up, right? And then we can read up all the all about uh, neural networks and how they are created. You know, train the model. You know, create the model, right? That's one option we have. Um, or number two is use a pre-trained model that we have already verified, we have already compiled, we know it works, right? So use a pre-trained model. And the third one that's also you know common is is more of incremental approach, right? Use a pre-trained model and then apply transfer learning specific to your custom use case, right? It could be changing some weights in the network. It could be changing a couple of, couple of layers on the outputs uh, of the network, right? So it could be in a multiple ways and that's common uh, practice you know, for many applications. In this webinar, we're gonna be using option two. So we're gonna use a pre-trained model that's available um, open source you know, on TensorFlow in a hub um, that you can directly you know, pick it up and you can learn about what that model is doing, what are the labels you know, that it is trying to detect and all that stuff is available in this link. So what is MobileNet, right? So this is you know, one of the frameworks that we have seen in the previous chart you know, of the accuracy and you know, performance, right? On the middle, it basically shows all the architecture, you know, starting from input size, right? Input size is you know, 224 by 224 by three, so that three is basically RGB, red, green, blue, uh, for the image that's coming in, and 224 by 224 is the input. And it goes through many different you know, convolution layers, as you can see over here, there's a lot of you know, pooling you know, mechanisms. And the last stage is the classifier. So you take you know, any image, and the classifier, classifier is basically providing you what's in that image, right? Up to you know, 1,000. Um, um, you know, values. And you can see uh, how many parameters in this, uh, um, in this network, right? So 4.2 million to, you know, 0.5 based on, you know, different, you know, uh, optimizations, right? That's a lot of, you know, uh, parameters in the network, right? All the weights and, you know, all the nodes in the structure, right? It's pretty complex, right? So, um, and the good thing is, you know, these are um, easy to use, and we can use that now you know, to develop our first application. So what tools to use to create your first Hello World application? There are many different you know, frameworks available. And 
one uh, framework that we have used uh, in this webinar is a very popular um, Anaconda framework. You can um, just go to anaconda.com and then you can um, download your um, you know, uh, free individual you know, license and get started. It also uh, has uh, Jupyter. You can uh, install, you know, once you install Anaconda, you can also install you know, Jupyter. And Jupyter is kind of a IDE, but it's a very nice uh, uh, browser-based, um, you know, Python in a compiler. And the neat thing is, you know, it's not just the code. You can also have uh, very good, you know, documentation along with it. And, um, uh, and that's what you know, we would be using, you know, for this webinar. And even our cloud tool uses the same because it is completely, you know, browser-based. And... Uh, we talked about this, you know, framework, right? So we're going to be using um, Google's uh, TensorFlow um, uh, deep learning, you know, runtime, and this is a completely open source. And there are two versions, you know, for this. Uh, TensorFlow, you know, it is more for you know cloud and PC type applications, and then TensorFlow Lite, as the name indicates, it's a, a lightweight version of TensorFlow targeting edge devices. They'll have a much smaller you know, footprint in terms of uh, both the memory um, and also you know, performance you know, um, you know, uh, requirements. And it basically what it does is you know, quantizing the weights you know, to be able to um, make it optimum for embedded devices. It supports you know, both 30-bit you know, floating point or the fixed point and also uh, cutting away some parameters in the model, right? And that have you know, little impact you know, on the performance. So that is very commonly used, you know, for um, quite a bit of uh, embedded uh, applications. So um, that's what we're going to be using. And um, so once you install Anaconda in the, from the previous slide, now what you need to do is uh, installing uh, the TensorFlow runtime. And you can see the command over here. You can use a pip3 you know, to install uh, TensorFlow Lite. And the other useful software library for any AI application is uh, open source. Um, um, sorry, open uh, CV. Um, it's, it's basically a computer vision library and it provides a common infrastructure for many different computer vision applications. Whether you use Python, you use in a C, um, right? Um, and it has a vast um, library of uh, algorithms to be able to read the image, you know, pre-process it very easily and then doing a post-processing as well. So um, it's uh, highly um, you know, used in the industry and you can install this as well you know, from uh, the pip tool you know, using the command over here. And we can do this in the Python, right? And, but you know, similar interfaces will be there in the other languages like C++ or you know. And the other one, uh, if you know Python, if you heard about Python, you, know, you would also be you know, um, you know, hearing about uh, NumPy. And this is an open source um, you know, package you know, for you know, dealing with all these you know, numbers, right? So image itself is a, is a two by two. And then when you add you know, RGB, you know, we looked at three by 224 by 224, right? So manipulating all these you know, matrices uh, becomes much more um, easy and much more intuitive uh, with this you know, NumPy in a package. So this is what you will see in many of you know, Python programs. And you can install this as well uh, using this command. So once we have uh, the Anaconda and the Jupyter installed, TensorFlow installed, OpenCV installed, NumPy installed, now we have everything. And all these are available online, and now we can jump to the code. So once we have you know, this, all the software libraries installed, um, you know, our Hello World code essentially has three main segments. So we just imported NumPy, CV2, TensorFlow Lite, right? So we can import all these into the Python program, right? So that's what this step number one is doing. And step number two is we already selected and downloaded the model from the TensorFlow um, in a page, right? So we are using mobile net v1. So that's what um, this uh, over here. And that model comes with the actual network file and also the labels. The labels are basically the thousand um, you know, outputs you know, that is the final stage of the neural network, right? So we can make a, a quick uh, dictionary out of this in the, in the Python, and then 
um, you know, to be able to, um, you know, interpret, you know, what, um, you know, the network puts out, you know, uh, in the results page. And very simple commands to be able to load uh, the uh, TensorFlow Lite deep learning model that is coming from open source, right? It's essentially two commands that you see uh, over here. So set the interpreter uh, from the TensorFlow Lite. It's part of the TensorFlow Lite uh, library that you know, we just uh, imported. And then uh, allocate um, the individual you know, sensors, you know, both input and the output, and allocate the memory you know, for the whole network in the system. Right? That's what step number two is doing. And once you have the model already in the system, now you can take any input. That's what this first step uh, is saying. You know, you're, uh, reading an image file using the CV2, I mentioned like you know, CV2 makes it very easy. Um, you read this input file and then invoke the neural network model, the in interpreter, right? That's what this invoke is doing. And once you do the, in once you invoke it, then all this neural network computation, you know, happens, this millions of operations happens and all you'll be coming out with, the output will have you know, what are all the objects that, you know, it finds and what is the score? What is the confidence level that we believe, you know, that's object that, you know, we recognized um, is, is the dog or the cat, right? So, um, and then we can basically analyze, you know, all that output and that's what you know, we get, you know, from the score. So we put in just, you know, dog, cat, you know, uh, image exactly as is. And now what we have done is basically say hello to the dog, say hello to the cat. And we are also putting what is the confidence percentage, right? The 94, 95%, right? So that simple code will be, you know, walking through that code, um, you know, uh, um, in, a, in a bit. Uh, but we took that image, we went through all those three steps and then be able to, um, you know, do this uh, inference to this automatic de detection of uh, the two images, you know, in the object. Now you can apply this to any image in the real world. And you can also do this, you know, now if I want to do this in, in a very high speed, right? You know, now this, this takes like, you know, 0.5 seconds, right? That's on the PC. Now I want to do this, you know, on a video. What does it take, right? We need to be able to do this inference much faster, right? Could be, you know, 50 hertz or, you know, 50 frames per second or, you know, 100 or the more, the better, right? Think of a robot. Now it's trying to do the same thing, you know, to avoid obstacles. The faster it can do this interference, the smarter it can get to, right? So that's the goal of the AI. But as, as we said, we'll go step by step. So this is uh, step number one. We have now Hello World AI code running on the PC. Obviously, now our end goal is to make it much faster. Now let's get to uh, the second step, right? Take this code as is and run it on, uh, the, on the J7 EVM platform. Now, um, um, so now, you know, we did, we just did the first step over, um, um, over here, right? Running it directly, you know, from there. Now to be able to run it on an embedded device, uh, we talked about the compilation, right? So we need to, you know, compile the model, um, and then generate, you know, some kind of, you know, artifacts that would be understood by, uh, the target hardware, which is a TI SOC, um, that you see here. And once you do that optimization, then you can run the inference the same way that, you know, you have done in the previous step. Um, and then generate uh, the result. And the exciting thing here is um, you don't need to buy an EVM, you know, from TI, you know, to do this uh, step two or step three, right? Uh, we are now excited to provide this uh, complete uh, cloud tool where you can log into, you know, one of our EVMs um, and then run the same code and then do a lot of, you know, uh, evaluation and uh, benchmarking, right? So um, this tool is available. You can see the link, and we are going to be using that tool uh, in this uh, webinar. So once you log into the tool, you will have uh, four options over here, and we are also indicating, you know, what are the different things that you can do, and approximate time that it would uh, take, you know, to do that function. You know, for example, comparing different models, right? Out of the sixty plus models that we talked about, it just takes less than a minute, you know, to be able to do that. Right, and if you want to determine performance, you can do that in five minutes or so, right? Or you can do, you know, pre-compiled models. You know, you can do a lot of, you know, benchmarks. Right, it's less than an hour, you know, to do it. 
Um, and then of course, in a custom models, now you can do any kind of you know, work um, that you want to do. So for this step two of our Hello World program, um, we're going to be using a custom model and we're going to be opening up the same program that run, ran on the PC, right? Um, so um, this is basically now the same program that you see over here on the left-hand side. That's a snapshot of the Jupyter Notebook. I'll show that in, in live. Um, now take the same code and now you can run it on the cloud. And we also provide a simple you know, Python you know, utility to measure uh, the performance of that um, you know, inference. So you can see this image over here. So this is basically taking inference time is about you know, 350 milliseconds, you know, very much similar to you know, what we saw in the PC. Um, right? So it's still not good for the real time, right? but um, um, you can see on the uh, computation graph over here, it's all done by the CPU. And CPU here is uh, the ARM A72 core um, in, uh, in the Jacinto uh, SOC. So the thing I want to you know, highlight here is, uh, and I'll be showing this in the, in the demo as well, is it's exactly the same code, right? That's running on the left side, on the, on the local host, right? You know, on the PC and on the right hand side, you know, you can see from the browser address over here, this is a cloud tool, right? So you're basically accessing the EVM from the cloud and then running the same program right, using the same TensorFlow Lightning framework, right? That's the beauty of this. And, uh, and especially with this Jupyter Notebook, um, your kind of, you know, um, experience you know, will stay exactly the same. So now it's working, right? Inference time is like, you know, 0.3 seconds, right? But how can I use this, you know, for the real time video, right? So um, as we discussed now, what we need to do is now let's bring in deep learning hardware accelerators, right? So that's going to be our uh, step three of this um, um, in a program. So here we just have to do one extra step. You know, we talked about um, you know compiling and optimizing you know the model, and um, TensorFlow provides a lot of you know mechanisms you know to be able to compile the mod um, you know the original model to any hardware accelerator, right? And this is uh, by means of uh, uh, something called uh, a delegate. So as you can see in this you know code example over here. Um, you know, there is uh, this experimental, you know, uh, delegate, you know, option, and it's a way for this TensorFlow Lite interpreter, the runtime engine, to offload some parts of the network, you know, to the hardware accelerator, right? Obviously, it's all, you know, numerically intensive operations, right? And then now you can offload that, you know, to um, the hardware, right? And then the, uh, once, you know, you do, you compile this model, you run the in, um, inference, you know, again, and this acceleration happens automatically. And um, that's really you know, the beauty of this. Now, if I run the same program after compiling, um, now I'm getting uh, inference time is 3.3 milliseconds. Right? And I think I have the next slide you know, here comparing side by side on um, how, what kind of results you, know, you will get you know, if you run only on the ARM core, and then on the right hand side, now you're enabling the hardware, compiling the model and leveraging the C7X and the MMA accelerator that, that is out there. So, um, and you can see you know, from the graphs as well, on the right hand side, the CPU was only involved you know, in the beginning. Um, and then, um, then you, know, you have the green portion is basically all the computations and the purple is basically when the data is you know, going up. Right, that's really the beautiful, um, beautiful um, you know, aspect of uh, running on the hardware accelerator. Now, the performance became 100 times, right? 2.8 frames per second to more than 300 frames per second. Now we can do some useful stuff for real-time use cases. Let's say we have uh, a, a camera, a surveillance camera, and you know you have this in you know, a shopping mall kind of a thing. Right now, with this, you know, high-speed object detection, you can put this video into the same code that we have, right? The same Hello World program, but now you're detecting objects on the fly. You'll be able to um, zoom into the people, you know, um, and then you know, record, you know, whenever you know a person is there. Um, you can do all kinds of, you know, uh, you know, um, smart things, you know, once you have this capability to do 
high performance inference in low power optimized for edge device. Right? So step one, develop the model, run it on the PC. Step two, on the ARM, just as is. And step three is just add one extra step of uh, compilation. Three steps to embedded edge to de uh, AI device uh, development. Although hello world is as simple as it looked in the beginning, right? But if you look at this video now, you can do really fancy stuff, no matter what application that you, know, you have, um, you know, in, in your system. Unlimited possibilities. So now, um, we are doing you know very well on time so i will spend um just a few minutes um on kind of you know the demo and you know code walkthrough live so for this i'm going to open up uh, my browser so so this one um so i have the anaconda already you know uh, installed over here you can kind of you know see this uh, over here from here you know i launched the jupyter notebook and so this is um, the first step, right? So where you know running the webinar, uh, uh, hello, um, sorry, hello world program, you know, on the PC, and as I mentioned, like the Jupyter notebook, you can have you know all these you know, kinds of you know comments, you know, nice and description of you know what we are doing, and then um, the first segment was you know importing all the libraries. You now I can run you know cell by cell over here, um, and um, so I can run basically pretty much in the um, you know all the steps over here by restarting and running you know, all the cells. So now it's running over here. The last step you know, is where you know, it's running you know, the inference and it basically just you know, finished you know, reading the image and, uh, and then doing the classification. Right? So, so basically this is a code that you know, we talked about. Right? So um, you know, um, importing you know, all the required you know, pro, you know, libraries and then you know, reading the image and this is really the essence of it. Right, inter, uh, invoking the interpreter, and then after you get the result, and then doing you know post processing, right? So, um, and then um, the actual model itself, right? So this is uh, if you look up, you know, on um, online, you know, you will see this, right? So that's the um, um, TensorFlow Lite model that we are um, you know inputting to the TensorFlow Lite you know, interpreter, right? So that's this what um, you know is setting up the model is about. So we ran this, everything kind of you know, works, and then you know, this, this is the uh, output you know, we are getting, right? So now, step two is getting the same code and then running it on the cloud, right? And uh, so that's basically now over here. So now over here, now we are on uh, dev.ti.com, right? So I kind of you know, already um, logged in. And uh, you will have, you know, three minutes, uh, sorry, three hours, you know, per one session, you know, for you to log into. So um, now I have, you know, my own program already loaded in my workspace. So I will go to, you know, my workspace. And uh, this is uh, uh, the demo over here. So here, you know, I have uh, three notebooks. Um, these Jupyter programs, you know, uh, with all the description, they're called notebooks. So we have a Hello World PC notebook, you know, we just ran on the local PC. And then you have, uh, um, you know, two is uh, the same, you know, demo or only. And the third one is compile and run um, on the um, on the deep learning accelerator. So now let me open up uh, number two, right? And over here, so this is basically running it only on the ARM. So you can use exactly the same code, right? You're importing the same libraries as we have done in uh, on the PC and uh, you know, this is a pre-processing the image, same model I uploaded into my workspace and then loading it, right? And uh, allocating uh, tensors in you know, a same command, you know, it up, you know, sets up all the memory and everything, and then um, same input and running the same uh, uh, interpreter. So now if I run this entire code over here, it basically runs, you know, cell by cell, star means you know, it's still not running. Let's see where uh, it is right now. So it finished that. It's actually doing this process right now. And while that is running, I'm going to put this two notebooks side by side. So this over here and this over here. So it's now 
finished this step and now it's doing this. This is a 0% over here. Now it just finished running and we got almost similar results over here. The accuracy is slightly down 94.97 on the hardware, um, but you know, it's uh, pretty much you know, the same. So this is on the local host, right? That's running on the PC and this is running on the cloud too, right? Side by side, exactly the same code, right? And uh, that's the beauty of this uh, cloud tool. You know, same, um, you know, uh, environment. And as I said, like you know, now we have uh, more uh, utilities. You now I will be um, will be able to you know measure uh, the inference time. Right now we just talked about you know about um, you know two point eight you know, frames per second, and that's uh, over here. Right, it's all blue because we have not yet activated um, the DSP and the MMA accelerator. That's going to be our uh, third step. So here again, you know, I'll kind of you know, uh, run this whole thing over here. And while it is running, I'll kind of you know, walk you through the same code. So the only step that is additional in this, uh, uh, um, in this step three is uh, compiling uh, the model, right? So all this is the same. And when you're compiling the model, so that's what this step is all about. And that's when it's spending some time over here. So we are basically using the same, um, you know, um, APIs, you know, from the TensorFlow library, right? But here we are providing um, some compile options, and we are also, you know, giving the uh, path of, you know, where the TIDL, TIDL stands for TI uh, Deep Learning uh, Libraries, and then where that compiler um, is. I'll make this in you know, a full screen. Uh, full screen. So, um, and then, you know, we have. Uh, um, the application, the compiler that basically imports the TF flight and then generates um, all the artifacts that are um, that will be used to um, leverage uh, the um, accelerators. So once you do this, um, and then we also have uh, some calibration images, you know, to be able to you know um, you know tweak the weights and you know optimizing um, this model, you know, for um, you know for um, to be able to suit you know for uh, TIs and hardware. So this compilation typically it happens on your local PC. You know you can do this on you know your x86 platform. We have uh, the TIDL um, you know libraries. Um, you know full software you know um, you know environment you know is already available. So uh, you can do this you know offline because it's all about compiling the model so that you, know, you can use it on your hardware you know later on. So once um, so now this is done. So now the next step is now uh, using um, the compiled model. So now here, it's basically now the same um, steps as you know before. You know now we are using, um, you know that compiled model which is in the artifacts folder over here, and you can see that um, you know in your uh, workspace. So it's over here, and these are all the files um, that the compiler you know creates. So. So now this is um, using that model, and uh, it's basically this the same command. The only difference now is it's using this experimental delegate option. This option was not there when you're running only on the PC or when you're running um, only on uh, the ARM code, right? So just you know, very quickly you know, going over here for that portion of the code over here, so it doesn't have um, the experimental delegate, right? We are just executing the TF flight model as is, right? So that's really what you need to do just one extra step of compilation. And then once you compile it, um, then you, know, we, you enable that you know, when you do the inference, right? It's as simple as that. And you're doing everything on the Python over here, right? You're not basically, you know, you know, there's no different environment. It's exactly the same environment uh, to be able to do this stuff. So it's still kind of you know, um, doing this you know, processing over here. So while that is doing, I will kind of you know open up, um, and this workspace is also you know pretty easy to use. You know, uh, once you create your own programs, they're always you know there you know for um, you know on the cloud, right? You know, we are saving this for you, so you can always you know bring it back up, um, you know whenever um, you know you uh, want to you know tweak the program or something like that. So I just noticed you know this you know program is now done. So now let's see. Um, so basically, it's it kind of finished everything. So it um, you know set set up the uh, interpreter and uh, did the in inference, 
and now um, it's it's finished, right? We got kind of a similar results. I kind of the accuracy seems to be 87% for the dog um, compared to 95 plus, you know, in the previous example. But that's all, you know, because of the quantization and all the benchmarking, right? And that's something you can tune in your application, and that's what most of our um, you know, developers should do, right? So that's going to be in you know, a quite a bit of stuff. And then we're going to talk about a lot of you know, different tools you have at your disposal to be able to you know, tweak that. And um, so it finished the friends. And then, you know, from all the statistics, you know, we kind of you know, see over here exactly the same as a snapshot you know, that you know, we have seen, um, we have seen, you know, before. So 3.3 milliseconds, right? So we finished all the three steps, right? So uh, step one, running on the PC, step two, running on the arm of the embedded device, and step three is really make it real time by compiling the model and running inferences you know, from that model. So the nice thing about this Jupyter Notebook is um, you, know, you can kind of you know, save these files um, along with the results and kind of save this file you know, for future. You know, most of the time, this kind of webinars, the demos don't work as planned, but luckily you know, it all worked fine in this case. But if it were not working, I could always use you know, the saved you know, um, you know, uh, files and then show you how the output would look like under normal circumstances, right? So that's another advantage of uh, uh, the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so that's uh, the demo portion of it. You know, we have seen all the three steps. Now let's go back to the slide set. So we have seen this, right? So we um, have, you know, compiled that, you know, step three program, and then we witnessed um, more than 300 frames per second object detection in a frame, right? And then we have seen this video on, you know, what we can do with this kind of technology in real AI use cases. So just a couple of examples, right? And let's say you know, think about a camera, right? Just like that surveillance example. Now we can do automatic object detection, automatic in you know, a person detection, right? We can do adaptively zoom into areas of interest, right? And then can do real time decision making, right? So a lot of you know, useful functions and you can add to that camera and then you can call it AI enabled camera. That's what we see in the market right now, right? Everything is AI enabled. Same thing for a robot. Right or you know could be last mile delivery where you could detect you know hazards you could detect you know collisions and avoid them and you can really you know um, make this last mile delivery type applications you know, possible and you can call it AI enabled robot and other example you know could be a shopping cart right you know we can um, put like you know AI enabled cameras in the shopping cart and then completely automate the shopping experience you know, for the user. You can detect fraud, you can provide in you know, a convenience, right? Just by doing three core AI functions, image classification, detecting the objects, and then segmenting a scene, right? So AI embedded, AI in low power, really offer unlimited possibilities. So that's kind of the essence of this webinar, right? So we started with the hello world, Right, and then we kind of showed all the three steps of making that hello world example really useful for real use cases. What can you do, you know, from here, right? You know, for advanced development, um, we're going to spend you know, a few minutes um, on that. So we talked about this, right? So um, essentially the same, right? Now you can go deeper into, you know. Understanding, you know, all the different you know, models that you know, we have, you know, we have made available for our customers, right? Look at the link over there. Look at the Edge AI Cloud. Um, you can really, you know, understand the trade-offs between accuracy, performance, and power, um, you know, across you know, the 60 plus models, right? Play with those models, right? Um, and then. Um, also get to know the compilation in more details, right? Now we have noticed some loss, you know, uh, reduction, right? How do you, um, with the basic model that you know, we just downloaded, right? Without any optimization, right? Just straight compile, um, you know, what can you do in terms of improving that, you know, process, you know, optimizing it to get the accuracy back up, right? And you could even probably, you know, increase the accuracy in your app application. And then uh, deploying this into um, uh, a real, you know, SOC um, as well. And you can, we have uh, not only the model zoo, but we have uh, extensive, you know, tools available 
to really jumpstart your application development, right? So Model Zoo has all the models that are verified to work, right? Mobile Net V1 that we used in this is uh, one example of that. Um, we have also uh, done a lot of you know compilation for these models, and you can take the compiled model uh, directly as well. You can even bypass the step that you now I just showed in step three of compiling the model, right? Um, you can do that as well. Um, and then of course, um, uh, you know you can do a lot of you know, benchmarking. Um, sorry, this should be in you know, a one, two, three. Um, so the, um, basically, you know, three tools that we have available you know, for you. Um, to do you know further development um, with uh, with these tools. And one note on uh, compilation, right? So um, you know right now our TIDL compiler supports uh, all these you know, layers. If you create a model from scratch and then let's say that has you know different you know layer that is not yet supported, right? Um, that will be you know um, you know um, you know dealt you know uh, automatically. You know it could be running on the ARM. Um, you know, so there are a lot of, you know, documentation on our user's guide on how do you handle, you know, unsupported layers, you know, for your own custom model. It's very rare, you know, for developers to choose, you know, something that's not already out there, but that option is already, is also available, you know, for advanced, you know, users. Most of the time, you know, what we see is take an existing, and you know, a model that's already verified and then either, you know, do optimization, uh, change the weights, or you know do you know some um, um, transfer learning where you know you are just you know, some couple of you know output layers uh, in the model, but all the documentation is over here that you, know, you could um, you know uh, get access to that um, right away. And then we have a full SDK. You know we have a, not just this Hello World demo, but we have uh, many uh, you know vision analytics analytics de uh, demos using both our image processing uh, accelerators and also deep learning accelerators. We have some demos where you're not only doing detection, but also classification and segmentation all at upwards of you know, 50 you know, frames per second, right, with different uh, models. And you can see all those uh, links over here as well. And you know, for uh, more um, services, you know, we have a comprehensive third-party ecosystem as well. You know, for you know, broad range of applications, you know, that's say you know, possibility as well. Um, so you know, we have uh, listed in a couple of you know, partners over here. Um, and um, so with that, we'll come to the last slide, right? So what is the call to action? So hopefully, this webinar, um, you know, gave you the exposure, you know, to um, this, you know the whole landscape of you know different you know software tools and what software frameworks you, know, you can use to get started with the um, you know uh, ai application development and how you take that on the pc and then run it onto the soc with the uh, acceleration so we'll be making this example code available to you after you know we finish the webinar and you can download this try with different images right and uh, you know different you know, video clips right you, know, you can do all that you know with just using the basic commands and then you know a few more you know commands you, know, you can find in respective you know library documentation and the next one is reimagine what's possible right now we just gave you a uh, a kind of a an idea of you know what you can do with this real-time video analytics right and with your own application with your own imagine imagination um there are so many uh, smart things you know we can do uh, we can add into your uh, end device and as you're getting started in your journey to AI development, we are here for you, right? Not only with comprehensive software offering, you know, what that we showed in this webinar, but if you have any, um, you know, issues that you, know, you run into, you can use our E2E forum uh, and ask, you know, specific questions, uh, and then we'll be happy to, you know, help. And as I said, you know, before I wrap up, um, this is a monthly webinar uh, series. Um, we are going to be, you know, planning, you know, different topics. And if you have any specific topics um, that you want us to cover, uh, please definitely let us know. There is a, a forum post, you know, for this webinar. You can comment there, or you know, you can just, you know, put a post uh, into the utu.rta.com. We are planning, you know, more uh, detailed sessions on more architecture of uh, the deep learning accelerator. Um, you know, how do you, um, you know, more aspect, more detailed aspects of, you know, custom model compilation and development, and also um, you know, GStreamer and OpenCV image processing and things like that. There are many different things to learn. So we'll keep this, you know, a regular recurring uh, sessions to help you 
um, with your AI journey for your application. That concludes uh, this webinar. Thank you very much again. And we are really excited and I'm sure you are excited as well to make your end system AI enabled. Thank you.